Welcome to the Life Unlimited Podcast with Larry Heller. You deserve complete financial advice so you can confidently live your life your way for life. Now, let's get into this week's podcast episode. Hello and welcome to Life Unlimited with Larry Heller from Heller Wealth Management. Larry, you're looking good. How are you? I'm doing great today, Eric. How are you? Uh, You guys, you may not know it, but today's the first podcast from our new office and coming to you from our podcast room, uh, solely set up for doing these podcasts. Wow. Okay. Dedicated room for podcasting. Love it. You have developed into the professional podcaster, sir. Yes, we've got, you know, I think this is 111, 111. Yeah. So now we're doing podcasts, we're doing video, and this room is big enough that I'll be able to have in house guests. Um, nice. Instead of Zoom guests, I guess soon <laughs> rather than rather than later. So uh, it's it's fun. Um, everyone should have gotten a notice about our move. We only moved up the block a little bit, but a little bit nicer offices. Uh, a little bit more space. Hopefully those that are close will be able to come by and uh, check it out soon. Yeah. Room for growth. I love that. that that's fantastic. <laughs> All right. Yep. Today you are talking about the bear market. Uh, this is what I'm, this is what I'm hearing from you. And when I think of a bear, first thing I think of is a panda bear. Um, they're fun, cuddly, cute, you know, funny to watch, but that's not what this is. <laughs> That's not the kind no. of bear you're talking so, about. Because uh, well, the first thing I would bear. think of when someone says bear is a grizzly bear. So, uh, so uh, maybe I'm a little bit different with my first thought. It thought thought is so. Yeah. So the antithesis, I guess. Uh, you know, growth is uh, a bear market, and a lot of people seeing some uh, some gains wiped out and some uh, investments um, totals going down, uh, but. You know, being that I've done this a couple of times, I've lived through a couple of these bear markets and yep. history has always shown that the bear markets eventually come and lead to a bull market. So, uh, but there are some things you can do when we're going through some of these downturns. So that's what I thought we'd talk about today. All right. Sounds good. All right. The steps you can take in a bear market. Let's, let's start at the top, Larry. What are we yeah. doing? How, how do we stay safe from that grizzly? Yeah, well, we can't always stay stay safe from the grizzly, but you can do some things that can help you now and possibly help you going going forward. So one of the things, first step, let's talk about let's talk about the investments and the and what we call is your asset allocation. So there have been numerous studies, Eric, which basically say that ninety percent of your returns are based upon your asset allocation. And during these bear markets, maybe your asset allocation has changed. Maybe your equities is lower. What your target long-term allocation is. Maybe you've now gone um, less on growth um, than you've had before, or maybe you want to change up your allocation a little bit, like we've done earlier in the year, and increase our value allocation. And what about small equities to large equities or international emerging markets? And then on the bond side, what about your bond duration? Mm -hmm. And what about the types of bonds that you own? So this is a great time when there is a bear market to want to check some of these. Um, Now, if you're in a taxable account and maybe before you you were didn't want to pay as much in capital gains by making some of these changes, but now may be a better time to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's a great time to look at your asset allocation. Of course, we're always recommending and we're always looking to rebalance your allocation when when changes are made. And what does that allow you to do by rebalancing, Eric? Any idea? Well, stay safer or be more aggressive in a market that allows you to buy at the low, right? Exactly. So now you may be buying at the low and selling some other things that maybe are at the high. So again, rebalancing and looking at that, you should do that on an ongoing basis, regardless of a bear market. But in a bear market, it may be a great time to do that. And then even some of your specific investments, uh, maybe you are too much allocated in one particular stock or one particular fund, and maybe now is a good time to pair some of those back and to reposition some of that money into something else. So, uh, so looking at your asset allocation, looking at the investment reviews, looking at your bond duration, those are all great things to do during a, uh, during a bear market. Let me ask you this, Larry, before you move on too far, is rebalancing 
what determines how you rebalance? Is, is it more of your time horizon? So a 45 year old compared to a 55 year old compared to a 60 year old, or is it a long-term goal issue where you have to take a look at the goals of the individual person to rebalance according to that? So time horizon versus goals, kind of what so plays into that? So actually, it's a little bit of both. And there's also a third factor in there. And what is your risk tolerance? True. Because what we found over the years, is if you are have too much in something that's risky, and you go through a bear market, and you can't stomach it, you're more inclined to sell at the worst opportune time. Mm -hmm. So time horizon plays in you goal plays in, and also your risk tolerance play in. So you want to have a target allocation that's going to achieve your long-term goals. And the, 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 the further away you are from using the money, in theory, the more aggressive you can be. But you also want to add in what your risk tolerance is. We use a 25-question um, risk tolerance to really hone on that. So when we're going through a bear market like that right now, people ask us, oh, you must be so busy and you're getting some calls. I can literally say, I don't think we've gotten one call so far during this downturn here. And part of that has to do with the strategy that we've put together and that the investments in the more aggressive equities are for longer term time horizons. Mm -hmm. And people that have been with us for a long time understand that things go through cycles. And this is another one of those cycles. So, uh, so, so those two categories plus the risk tolerance puts together when you're creating the asset allocation. And if you spend the ramp, the right amount of time on that, you're able to withstand these bear markets or downturns. All right. So let me ask you this. Are your clients reaching out to you to talk about this? Or is this something that they're so used to that you doing automatically and saying, hey, this is what we're going to do, that they're just like, do your thing, Larry? Yeah, so most of the clients would you know, do the, do the thing. Obviously, some of the newer clients we're proactively mm -hmm. reaching out. I mean, all our clients we speak to on an ongoing basis, but they're they're all aware of, of what this is. And you know, the the really the the clients that are further time horizon away from using the money understand that. And that's that's when I want to talk a little bit about cash and how what how does that come into working in a bear market. So let's talk about a couple of things on the cash side. So okay. if you have cash and your longer time horizon, maybe now is a good turn to, uh, you know, put some of that cash to work for you, uh, whether it's all at once or on a dollar cost averaging. Um, again, we don't know when the lows are going to be in the market, but that's one thing that we've talked to and look at that for those that do have cash in there. But the real key for us and for our clients that are close to retirement or already in retirement is really the cash position in what we have called our reservoir strategy, which we've talked about mm -hmm. numerous times on our pad podcast. But by having two to three years of expenses in cash, what does that allow you to do? It allows you to ride out these downturns. So, so you're not selling your equities during mm -hmm. a bear market, that by having these cash positions when you're retired and drawing down on your portfolio, getting close to using that money, it's real important to have that. And that's probably one of the reasons why we, all, we also don't get phone calls is because we have those cash positions in the short term part of their portfolio. I, I'll be honest, Larry, you're the first advisor I've ever spoken to that has, talking, uh, that has spoken about two to three years cash reserve, right? And I, the first time you told me that, I was like, man, that's a lot of cash. That's a, that's a lot in cash, I should say. And most people that I've heard, most advisors are like three to six months of living expenses. But every downturn that I've experienced, the early 2000s, 07, 08, it's not the first six months of 07. They, they call it 07, 08, kind of 09, right? There's multiple years there. So the more I've really examined that, the more I'm like, okay, Larry's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, well, again, it's, it's, again it's, when, when, it's the market, when the market's flying, we actually have clients saying, why do we, and again, these are retired clients or near retired clients or mm -hmm. for a goal that they're saving up for, the closer you get for that, the more you want to have in cash. So yeah, we've had clients, even retired clients, why do we have so much money in cash when the market is 
making double digits and I have this much in cash. And the reason, this is the reason being yeah. for these particular times. But when we go through the bull market, that's why I say two to three years, it really depends upon the, the time horizon. When, when it's a, a real bull market for a long period of time, we want to increase our cash onto the higher side. And then as they, it goes down in a bear market, it, it can go lower. And the reason why we look mm -hmm. at two to three years, we have a lot of studies and a lot of history about all the different bear markets going back to the depression and the average time, how long these last. And if you look at them, just about everybody, every one of them lasted less than three years. So, uh, so if you have the time horizon to wait out, then you have the cash and then it, and then it works. Yeah. So, so you have to factor, you have to factor that in the overall game plan. So you're not stuck selling things at, on a, on a downside. Well, yeah. And, and I think about what happens if, right? So what happens if we were in this bear market for four years, you have clients that have three years worth of taking out of cash instead of out of their out of their portfolio, where you've got another person who has now depleted four years worth of expenses out of a portfolio that could have come back when the bull market comes back. So yeah, I, I can't imagine the advantage. I mean, it's a huge advantage. Right. And it's not just equities now. So th this is for a lot of, a lot of people, most people, this is the first time we've sees, seen a rising interest rate environment. So bonds yeah. are going down in value too. In the past, you yep. be, at least the equities were down. You could sell some bonds when rates were going down. But now it's even more critical because bonds go down in value as rates go up. So yeah, so knowing your asset allocation, sticking to your asset allocation, having the cash in a strategy and a reservoir strategy, I would think that most lay people, that's their biggest issue mm -hmm. is they're, they're forced to sell. I was talking to a client that recently had moved to Florida and they were they, they were older, so they were taking the required minimum distributions and they were in our reservoir strategy. So they have plenty of cash and they were talking to someone else and they're like, well, they're holding off on taking the required minimum distribution this year because they didn't want to sell something in a down market. But by the end of the year, they're going to have to take money out of that yeah. account. So one way or another, they're going to be forced to take it out and they may be forced to sell because they didn't have any cash in that account. Yeah, that word required. <laughs> that kind of yes, tells you everything. That word required. required. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So that little that little tricky word there. Yeah. So you know, so it is, and and also looking at cash now is a little bit better. We are seeing some little higher rates of returns on one year, two year, three year treasuries and CDs. Mm -hmm. So there is now at least now there's a little bit of money we can make on some of the cash. It really was tough a few years ago, not even that long ago, when you're making almost nothing on cash and trying to explain it to people. But once they've gone through one of the bear markets, that light bulb goes off. Yeah. Ah, that's why we have that <laughs> cash sitting there. Yeah. So again, you have to look at the time horizon. And if you're 30 years old, no, you don't need in the money is in your IRA account. No, you don't need cash in that. In that. You just see it go down and go back up. But if you're... At, at the point where you're taking money out, looking at the cash and looking at the right asset allocation is, is very important. It, it's interesting because just in the last six months, I've been looking more at prepping, right? Because of shortages and all this stuff. And I'm not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, but mm -hmm. I believe it's a, a good, reasonable expectation to go ahead and stock up on some reserves, food-wise, water-wise, just in case something happens. You never mm -hmm. know. We're looking at you know power outages and rolling brownouts or blackouts mm -hmm. in certain states, water shortages because of Lake Mead and, and some of the things that are going on there. I think it's just a wise idea. And people have been talking about that for years, but what I haven't heard a lot of is what you're saying, right? Having those cash reserves on hand, there's no difference. You, you have to dip into something in a time when you, you know, resources are scarce or when the market, you don't want to take out of those accounts. So I love that. I mean, I think that's fantastic. I think more people need to be talking about it. Obviously, this is why you do the podcast. Um, yes. And talking about expenses, that's the next thing that, you know, we see coming now is inflation last month was at 9.1%. Ouch. I think that was in May. So 9.1%. So, yeah. you know, that's way above the historical norms, way above the, I think the historical norms are less than 3%. And mm. um, so now, 
if you're looking at that and your expenses are higher, you may even need a little bit more cash in your portfolios to allocate for, you know, for that. And that doesn't include the cash that you need for emergency funds as well. That's even separate. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. You've spoken about Roth conversions before uh, on, on multiple podcasts and touched on it. And, and I think one of them, you actually did a deeper dive into it, but in a, in a market like this, with, I don't even know if inflation plays into it or the interest rate uh, plays into it, Larry, but what are your thoughts on Roth conversions during this time? Is this a good idea, bad idea? What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's a good idea, especially if you're in a position right now that you have less income for whatever reason, you retired and you're not taking mm -hmm. social security yet, or your income is down because whatever your business you do is, is less. So now you can move more of that money from your qualified accounts into a Roth account. And then when we do have a turnaround, that Roth account is going to grow for you tax deferred and eventually mm -hmm. tax free when you want to take the money out. So, uh, so again, there's a lot of variables, like you said, we've talked about it on numerous podcasts. So um, gladly discuss with anybody the, all the, the pros and the cons and does it make sense and the analysis that we do on the, uh, on the Roth conversions, but now may be a, a great time to do Roth conversions. Okay, I, I want to clarify something because I actually had this conversation with a friend of mine last week. If you do a Roth conversion, I don't, I know you don't want to do a deep dive into it. But his concern was, well, I don't want to do that because then I'd have to pay a penalty and taxes. But that's not the case if I'm, I'm not mistaken. I know you've talked about it before. It's just that you're going to have to pay the taxes on it when you do the conversion, but there's no penalty as though you're pulling out of a 401k or an IRA, correct? Right, right, correct. Yeah. correct. Okay. So, uh, so, you know, you have to, you have to look and, you know, how, how old you are, when you're going to need the money, what the story is. So, uh, so looking at the different, you know, the different options, and the time horizons and see what you see what that is. All right, Jason, I was right. I'm, I'm sending this podcast to him, Larry. So because I told him, I said, No, there's no penalties, but I'll get Larry to tell you that. So he, you did. Thank you. <laughs> what else do we need to cover today? So let's talk a little bit about tax loss harvesting. Oh, okay. Uh, so one of the other strategies that you can do is, you know, you know, tax loss, tax loss harvesting. What does that mean? Again, we've talked about this on a few different podcasts before. And one of those is you have an account and your account is down. It's now on a bear market. So it's at a mm -hmm. loss position. And what do we just say? We don't want to sell during a loss position. However, there's a strategy that you can implement that you can sell and protect yourself in case the market goes up, but be, a, be ahead of the game. So let's just take for an example, you have XYZ fund, mm -hmm. and that fund is worth $100,000. And that fund now is dropped to $80,000. And you don't do anything, you keep that fund like it is, the market eventually bounces back and eventually grows. And later on, let's say that account is worth 120000 and that's all great. And you've made some money and it's worked out by holding, holding on. But what happens is when it, that XYZ account, when it was $80,000, you sold that account mm -hmm. and you bought a similar fund, let's say ABC fund at the exact same time, not the exact fund, but a similar fund. Mm -hmm. And then you held that fund for 30 days. I'll explain why for 30 days. Okay. But at the end of 30 days, then you sell ABC fund and go back to XYZ fund. And let's say during those 30 days, the market didn't, the fund didn't change. Mm -hmm. So the fund was still at 80,000. Now you're back into that same fund at, say, have the same 80,000. But what did you do? you booked a capital gain loss, that 100,000 versus the, the, the 80,000, you booked a $20,000 loss that you can use to offset other gains. Mm. Or if you don't have any other gains, you can use up to $3,000 of the loss and then carry forward that loss. So eventually when it gets back to 120,000, you're in the same exact position that you were if you didn't do this tax loss harvesting, but now you have these losses. And if you're in a higher bracket, those losses can be great returns. So looking at your account, seeing where it makes sense in some of the losses. Now, one of the reasons why we say we wanna buy another fund, a similar fund, in the event that during those 30 days, the market just blows up and goes crazy, you may want to stay with that fund because now if you sold it to go back into the original fund, you'd have gains 
that mm. would offset the losses. Got so it. looking at these during these time frames, I mean, 2008, I mean, we used so many losses there for some newer clients that we had years and years and years before they ended up having to pay taxes on their wow. capital gains. So it's not just how much money you make, we tell people, it's how much money you keep after taxes. So looking at that and looking at the strategy to see if that makes sense for you is another thing to do, another step to do during a bear market. You know, I've never asked this question. You've spoken about tax loss harvesting before as well, Larry, but I've never asked this question. Is it possible to do that in a 401k because that's through your business? No, you can't no. do this in a retirement account. You can't do an IRAs, you can't do it in profit sharing accounts, can't do it in 401ks. No, only in an, a taxable account. Actually, I had a client yesterday that emailed me. He thought he was thinking of a great way of doing it. He, he wanted to take the losses. It's a newer client. Mm -hmm. And he saw that it was down. And he said, can we just, can we just take those losses? And I said, nah, unfortunately, great idea. Can't do it on a retirement account. Got it. It's got to be a specific account. Okay. Correct. And that goes back to individual planning. Uh, I'm going to, obviously, I'm going to prompt you for some contact information at the end of the podcast here so people can reach out with their own individual situation and you can talk them through it. So that's great. Yeah. I was, I was afraid of that because my wife's for okay for 401k is down Larry, and I was looking for some advantages. <laughs> so no, back to the drawing board. Right. No, yeah, no, adva no advantage. Only. The only good thing about the 401k is Hopefully she's the contributing match. each paycheck. So it's going in at a little bit lower time um, yeah. of the market. Yep, absolutely. We're doing that right now. All right, what else for today for the bear market essentials? Yeah, so we talked a little bit about the cash and the needs and the retirement. So um, I'm just going to kind of state the obvious is don't panic <laughs> is that, you know, the, the, if you're not working with an advisor um, and you're doing it on your own, um, you know, behaviorally and your mind starts to play tricks on you when they, when things are down, you're like, Oh, I want to stop the bleeding. I don't want to see yeah. this go down anymore. So I'm going to sell. So it doesn't go down anymore. Um, and then they wait and then it goes up and now they're starting to feel like, Oh, the market's great. They're getting reports and they're listening to the news. Now they go back in. Well, yeah. that's exactly what you don't want to do. You want to have a strategy, a game plan, so you don't panic in the down on the downside. I'm, I mean, I'm going to give a plug for myself and all other financial advisors and planners out there. I mean, the one of the advantages of working with us is when you're going through these downsides is that you stay the course and you keep to your strategy and you look at the asset allocation and that, you know, we're not just compensated when the market is going up, we're compensated when the market's going down for making sure you stick to your, your, your strategy and you stick to the course and you do some of these other strategies to help save you money. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you a kind of an oddball question here, going back to uh, your, your cash situation. You're talking about living expenses to have those set aside. Do you suggest or do you advise folks to have some cash reserves set aside for taking advantage of a bear market, being able to get into the market more when things are on sale? You know, you know, I'm in Omaha and a buddy of mine, Buffett, or excuse me, what's whatever his name was. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I've never <laughs> met him before in my life, but he lives here. I know that much. Yeah. Um, he's all about buying when it's low and selling when it's high, which I think everybody should do. And you've said before. Are you suggesting a certain amount? And, and can you kind of give us a hint of what that might be for people to keep in reserve so they can take advantage of bear markets when we have them? No, we're, we're absolutely not saying that because hmm. okay. you know, mo most people are not like you know, Warren, Warren Buffett and, and doing that. So if you're, if you're young and there's a bull market going on, you don't want to have that money sitting in cash and not earning money for the day that there's going to be a bear market. You Got only it. want to have that cash is that you're going to need that cash. You're um, saving for a house. Um, you're saving for um, college for a child and you're getting, that's getting close to using that money or you're close to retirement. You need to take money out there. Those are the reasons why you need cash. And also the obvious one, just having enough cash for emergency funds, but no, mm. keeping cash aside, just for that and trying to time the time the market. One of my favorite examples is right before uh, President Trump was uh, was elected in the elections, people were saying, oh, if he got elected, the market is going to tank and they're going to. So 
I, I remember talking to a few people and they pulled all the money out of their market and they're putting it all cash. They're going to wait for it to go down and then go up. Well, he got elected and we had one of the best equity timeframes in history. Yeah. And you might have missed that time frame if you had some or even all of if you had all or even some of your money sitting in cash. So nobody really, nobody really knows what's going on. So no, we, we don't advertise putting that, you know, putting that, uh, just putting, keeping that in cash and waiting for a bear market. Well, that makes sense because I mean, I, I don't know the full history of it, but from 2012 to 2022 ish, yep. right. That's 10 years of a pretty doggone good market. So that would have been a long time to wait for an opportunity, Exa not an opportunity exactly. lost. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes those opportunities come across your way when you might inherit money or you mm -hmm. made a bigger sale and you're in the sale business or you sold the business. You know, we work a lot with a lot of business owners and who, who, who have sold their business and come into a lot of cash. And yeah, th then we may not want to invest all the cash all at one time. Mm -hmm. So in those instances, we may want to have a strategy. We call it, I call the dollar cost averaging and putting it over time. Um, and then using some of that cash when maybe there's a little bit of a pullback, but, but there, there also could be, no one knows exactly what, that maybe if you would have put it all to work at one particular time, it would have worked for you. But mm -hmm. so that that's probably some of the instances where we may keep some cash kind of on the side. So we're not investing it all at one specific yeah. time frame. All right. Anything else for the steps to take in a bear market for today, Larry? No, I think we covered all those steps to take in a in take in a bear market. So okay. um, I think one of the, we're going to do a future podcast on maybe retiring in a bad market, mm -hmm. which is a little bit, a little, little bit of some of the some of the same, but maybe a little bit, a uh, little bit of some uh, some ideas along those lines as well. Okay. Well, Larry, thank you so much for your time today. Always learn a ton, and I appreciate the time. Great to be here. Hopefully everyone enjoyed and got at least one idea out of this podcast. Oh, I'm sure they did. Absolutely. Again, Larry, thank you so much. And of course, our last thank you goes to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Life Unlimited podcast with Larry Hello. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the follow button below. This way, when Larry comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we'd appreciate a like and a follow there as well. We humbly ask that you share this podcast, rate it, and write a review as this actually helps others find the show. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Hello Wealth Management, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day, and we'll see you next time.